The Buckeyes adding quarterbacks like 2024 five-star Julian Sayan and Kansas State's Will Howard. They're also adding one of the top overall players in the country in Caleb Downs, among many other moves that we have to discuss. So for more on the state of the Buckeyes, we say hello to Dave Biddle of Bucknuts.com. Dave, I know you've uh, been very busy lately tracking all of this. But before we talk about Michigan's top rival, I got to ask, on a day like today, coming off of yesterday's news, what are your thoughts on the coaching change from the team up north? Yeah, it's not a surprise, Emily. I figured that he would be off to the NFL, and the Chargers seemed like a good landing spot to have a good NFL quarterback at the very least. He might be a great one in Herbert. Makes a lot of sense. Harbaugh, of course, finished his career with the Chargers. He spent his entire coaching career, head coaching career, in the state of California, except, of course, at Michigan. He came to Michigan and accomplished what he wanted to accomplish. There could be some NCAA penalties coming down the pike. Who knows? It makes a lot of sense. He's going out with the national championship. Now he's going to go back to the NFL and try and finish business that maybe he feel, feels like is unfinished, considering the fact he got to a Super Bowl with the 49ers. So it makes a lot of sense. I, I, I would have been very surprised, Emily, if he would have come back to Michigan for another year. Yes, I think that is the general thought among people is it's uh, not shock. We were waiting for this to happen. Uh, let's talk about the Buckeyes, though. Football, of course, has uh, always been king at Ohio State. But lately, it seems like the commitment has uh, ramped up quite a bit. You've got new leadership in the building, a revamped NIL department, and collective has just been on fire lately. So what do you think has led to some of these big moves recently? Yeah, the boosters getting ticked off. I would use a stronger <laughs> word. It's a family show. That's really what it is. The big money boosters are ticked off. Losing to Michigan three straight years. And Ohio State's been very close. I mean, think about the Georgia game the previous year. If they, you know, kick a field goal, they probably win the national championship. Play Georgia, you know, tooth and nail, and they're pretty much in their backyard in Atlanta. And then even Michigan this year lose to six uh, on the road at Michigan. Um, so they've been close. The boosters are upset. Close doesn't count in college football. So, um, yeah, I mean, you lose to Michigan three straight years, especially, Emily, after the Buckeyes dominated Michigan for so long. And then to see Michigan win the national championship, um, I know Ohio State fans didn't want to suffer through that Cotton Bowl. That might have been a necessary evil because that would, that also added to it, getting embarrassed in the Cotton Bowl. You add it all together, all of Ohio State's big money boosters are ticked off. And they are, uh, you know, doing a whatever they can as far as NIL and the transfer portal and recruiting and keeping their players. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. We're, we're going to talk about all the different levels of uh, the way that these boosters have been, as you say, in our uh, PG show ticked off. Certainly uh, you're seeing that reaction, though. Uh, but one more newness to uh, to this group. Bill O'Brien tabbed as the next offensive coordinator. He's led NFL teams. He's had the, held the same role under Nick Saban. I mean, he's got the resume, but what kind of impact will this hire be for Ohio State? Yeah, very interesting hire. I, you know, if you're an Ohio State fan, I think you should be happy what this represents because I think most of the best head football coaches, Emily, are CEOs. There are exceptions to the rule. And, you know, if, if you're calling plays now with everything else that's on your plate, especially for a college football head coach and you're dealing with NIL, the transfer portal, and everything else, that's just too much on your plate. I think Ryan Day finally realized that, even though this was tough for him because that's what he's known for best is calling plays and being, you know, an offensive guru. And um, but bringing Bill O'Brien in, it checks a lot of boxes. As you mentioned, you know, head coaching experience in the NFL, had a winning record in the NFL. I think Bill O'Brien wasn't a good GM in the NFL, but he did have a winning record, got to the playoffs four straight times. We could go down the list of college coaches that were not successful in the NFL that were great college coaches like Nick Saban, Steve Spurrier, Urban Meyer, on and on and on. So I think, you know, time will tell, but I think this is a really good hire for Ryan Day and the Buckeyes both what Bill O'Brien brings and what it represents that Ryan Day is now stepping back and is becoming more of a CEO. Yeah, and it might have already helped uh, them in the portal with uh, Julian Say and potentially having that relationship with Bill O'Brien. So let's go ahead and talk about uh, the, the, uh, the portal being really good to the Buckeyes this month. You've got Caleb Downs, as I mentioned, Julian Say and Will Howard, Quinjon Judkins, Seth McLaughlin. Uh, that should be plenty, but what do you expect their activity will potentially look like during the spring window? Yeah, that'll be interesting. I think, you know, they're either done or they're going to add an offensive lineman, in my opinion. And I think they want to add an offensive lineman if they can, but they're not trying to add a depth piece. They got plenty of depth. They can find, for example, a plug and play right tackle. You're not going to get a first round pick or anything in the in the portal, but if you can get a guy that could be like 
Ohio State had a transfer a few years ago, Jonah Jackson, who now plays for the Detroit Lions. He was a third-round pick by the Lions. He came to Ohio State for one year from Rutgers. He was a guard, not a tackle. Someone like that who could be like a really solid one-year starter and, you know, a right tackle, not a guard, and then be, you know, a solid NFL draft pick. That's what Ohio State's going to be looking for when the next window opens after spring. Will they find that? Uh, I don't know. They do have some in-house candidates. They do have four starters returning on their offensive line. But that was the biggest concern on the team this past year, I guess quarterback as well. But um, so that would be the one thing to look at. They might add a right tackle or they might be done. Something tells me they're not done, though, based on what we've seen them do this month. Uh, but certainly you will not be done when it comes to covering the Ohio State Buckeyes. Dave Biddle, thank you so much for being here. You can check out more of his work at Bucknuts.com. If you're like me and you know can't possibly keep track of all the news coming out of Columbus lately, keep it locked in to Dave and the crew over at Bucknuts.com. 